the family business. It's prone to face internecine feuds and competing interests among parties. All detriments to the business's survival, which is why succession planning is so vital. Family businesses help power the U.S. economy, contributing to almost half the gross domestic product. According to the National Bureau of Economic Excellence, individual family firms have an average lifespan of about three generations, with only about 12% making it that far. A recent PricewaterhouseCoopers survey finds that less than a quarter of family businesses have some semblance of a succession plan. Key elements should include developing a collective vision, securing trusted advisors, how will decisions be made, will family members have active or non-active roles, not to mention taxes and exit strategies which is why it can take years to craft a succession plan that successfully keeps the business alive. Brand Bank, founded in 1905, has defied the odds, going now into its fifth generation of family leadership, run by the founder's great-great-grandson, Bartow Morgan, Jr. He's the subject of today's executive profiles. As a kid, um, was the bank like an extension of your family? Sure, my, my father kept it pretty separate. Um, we weren't allowed to work inside the bank, uh, but we definitely got the, the, my father's values and how he thought about, uh, how he thought of banking and lending to the customers and, and the relationships we had with some of those customers growing up. So was the goal when you were a kid just saying, hey, one day I want to be a banker? Uh, probably not. Um, my father uh, died while I was in college, so yeah. I was 20 years old in economics class. And um, I came out, I graduated after that year, and came back to the bank, and it was really trying to figure out what do you do next. So you arrive, and you're all of 22 years old? 20 years old. 20 years old, and you come back to the bank. Uh, were you nervous? Uh, I, I guess the fear of failure would be the, <laughs> would be the way to describe the, the, I felt. So nervous, absolutely. What were the steps you took to try to um, learn? I was convinced I needed to do every job inside of Bran. So I, uh, I started out as a teller, and then I just asked what's next as soon as I figured out that job. I spent a lot of time with my dad's friends. They were in the industry, mm -hmm. and I would go and um, spend a half a day with them and, and learn from what they, they were doing and maybe they, they were changing inside their institutions. So you are now a couple years in. Um, you've, you're learning all about governance. You're learning about leadership. What are the, some, what do you, how do you view yourself as a leader in terms of leadership characteristics? It's tough to be a leader when you're in your 20s. Sure. Um, so I, I probably did not look at myself as a leader at that point. I, I really took it on as a learning experience and went through all the steps. I, I kid around, when my father died, there was, there was a leadership void at the institution, and uh, I, I was chairman and teller at the same time. So you, you're looked at as having that level of responsibility, but you really don't have the ability to accept that level of responsibility. Right. And how long did it take before you really felt like you were more than just chairman and teller? You were actually, well, I'm actually chairman and, and CEO, and this is starting to feel right. So uh, over, over that time frame with my father, I had to put different people in different positions because I was one thing I was certain was that I was not going to be CEO on day one. Obviously, that would have been a mistake. And so I spent a lot of time learning the different positions, and I put several people in those roles uh, as I went through time. And in uh, early 2000s, our CEO had gone disabled, and he's still on our board today. Um, and I said, this is, a, this is the right time for that transition. So over the years that you've been in the business, what have been some of the biggest changes that you think have impacted the banking industry and impacted Brand? So Brand is just a totally different institution than it was uh, 23 years ago when I joined it. I, at $180, $200 million, uh, you can, the management is water cooler. Uh, you can talk to everyone that's going to make a decision going down the hall. Uh, today at two and a half, multiple different offices, multiple different mortgage offices around the southeast, uh, you've got to have a plan. You know, we ran through the 90s and really built up to a top of kind of 320 banks in Georgia and right. we saw what that did in 2008 to 2013 
we really had uh, 100 bank failures, and I think it was 96 bank failures. And um, that has caused a lot of opportunity for a bank like Brand, who, is, uh, who has always been a community bank, to really uh, to look at the market and think differently about it. What were some of the lessons you learned about that, uh, that period of time? Because you saw a lot of, uh, at one time, very successful financial institutions just go by the wayside. Yeah, so we, we ran up into, so look back in 05, 06, and what was running up and what was what really caused the problem. There were so many different banks being opened that your customer was coming in and basically dictating the terms to the banker. And so the terms got much more aggressive running into 2008. And um, and, and finally, those aggressive term, terms of loans started bit all the banks. But you all went through an interesting time yourselves where you had to go out and get recapitalized. And um, I remember when, when it happened, you, you took a different, an approach that was a little bit different than a lot of other banks. You were able to go out and find outside investors to help um, recapitalize the bank and, and put it on the path that it's on right now. There was a problem. Everybody was failing. There was, there was not enough capital in the industry. And then, I mean, Wachovia failed during the time. So you all had basically the same assets. And so you either were going to go out and find the capital so that you could go both offensive and protect the defensive side, or you were just going to be subjected to what came at you next. Right. Uh, the problem was is that Georgia was not prepared to capitalize all of those banks back. And so I spent a lot of time, a lot of no's from a lot of people. Why would we want to go and catch that falling knife in the state of Georgia? Mm -hmm. um, but it eventually ran into a good partner, the Carlisle Group out of D.C. And, um, and they came in in 2011 and they exited in 2016. What does the bank look like today? And, and uh, where do you see it going? At the time we did the deal back in 11, we were about a billion dollars in assets. Right. We're two and a half billion dollars today. We've learned that you can't build a bank on commercial real estate. Uh, it, but Atlanta's a commercial real estate town, so you have to embrace it at the same time. Uh, but you have to be able to have a seasoned commercial team inside a brand. And so that's what we've built. We've gone out and looked for commercial lenders in the market that have been here, that have been seasoned. We didn't take our commercial real estate lenders and put them in the commercial bank. We built that team out. Um, we've got them in Cobb, Gwinnett, and Fulton. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll continue to build that commercial team and lead the, the building of brand through the commercial loans. Brand Bank operates eight branches across Metro Atlanta, four of which offer customers real-time, face-to-face interaction with a brand bank virtual specialist.